We are releasing our 2024 rankings update. We'll break down the new list of five stars right here on this show in minutes. Coop, you and the rankings team have been hard at work getting this ready. So what goes into a day like today? A lot of it. I got to give a lot of credit to my friend Andrew Ivins, who will be joining us here in a second. Gabe Brooks, Hudson Standish, and the rest of our team at 24-7 Sports. But, you know, this is a big update for us because it highlights the first four to six games of the high school season that we can dive into the senior tape. A couple more updates left, one in December and then another one finally in February to kind of highlight the postseason all-star schedule. So a big one in terms of the update, and we're getting closer and closer to the finish line. Well, let's do it. Let's waste no more time and welcome in the man leading the rankings team. It's our 24-7 sports director of scouting, the aforementioned Andrew Ivins. Uh, Andrew, it's certainly a, an exciting day. Brings a lot of mixed emotions and, of course, questions. <laughs> People want to know why 32 five stars? Why are we releasing this now? Is this the final product? You know we love transparency when it comes to this process, so break it down for us. What do we need to know about what's happening today? Well, Cooper brought up the senior seasons, right? I think it's so easy to lose track of all these guys that are supposed to make an impact on Saturdays at some point here in the near future. We're in an era where recruiting classes are full in August before preseason camp starts. So while others have turned the page to 2025 for us, these senior seasons are huge. I mean, think about it. We're talking about 16, 17, 18 year olds. They make huge physical and mental transformations. These first six, seven games are very key to the evaluation process. And over the past two months, our team of analysts around the country have not only been to games, right, scouted these guys in person, but we've also poured through the tape. We've audited recruiting classes and there's a lot of changes, right? A, a lot has guys have gone up the board, guys have gone down the board. And, uh, you know, why are senior seasons important? Let's C.J. Stroud, kind of one of the top rookies right right now in the NFL. As a junior, 17 touchdown passes. As a senior, 47 touchdown passes, right? So he took a big step forward. Jalen Carter, one of the top interior pass rushers in the league. Go back to his junior tape. 90% of it, he's playing fullback and tight end, right? Not a ton of him playing defense so uh, it's good to get new context Cooper mentioned it we're gonna have two more updates here one right before the early signing period and then we're gonna get the all-star games and that's the best on the best and then we'll finalize things right before uh, that February's traditional national signing day so exciting time <laughs> and more movement to come yeah, we like to say this is not written in Sharpie. It is fluid. Things will continue to change as they already have over the last few months. But uh, let's just waste no more time and go ahead and bring you the five stars. The full rankings will be up on the website, 247sports.com soon. But here are the five stars, 32 through 26. We've got two new additions in this range. In at 30, Jordan Seaton becomes the second five-star offensive tackle. We also have our first and only tight end in the group in Penn State commit Luke Reynolds. He moved up 20 spots there to 29. Let's show you 25 through 20, the five stars. A little shuffling here. No major changes really though in this group. Ohio State boasting two five stars in this range. They have four total in their number two class. But Coop, what stands out about those guys we just presented? I think you mentioned the lone tight end, right? Mm. I mean, you talk about Luke Reynolds committed to Penn State. And I think I speak for Andrew and the rest of our group here at 24-7 Sports. We have had a scouting crush on Luke Reynolds for quite some time, the tight end out of Connecticut. I think with him, 6'4 and a quarter, 225 pounds. He ran in the mid four fives, but you get around him and we got the opportunity to be around him in California at the Elite 11, which is a quarterback event. But this guy just kept showing up. And you look at the NFL, you look at the patterns in the draft, 16 tight ends taken in the NFL draft in 2023. They all had multi-sport backgrounds at the position. Luke Reynolds, a very good basketball player as well. This guy continues to show up. I love what he does on the defensive side of the ball as well, playing safety. So dynamic athlete. I think Penn State's got a really, really special prospect here. All of this based on the NFL draft. You just continue to see the stock and tight ends rise. Let's keep it moving and show you 19 through 11. Now we're getting into some quarterbacks. Alabama commit Julian Sayan keeping his five-star status. But we have a brand new addition. Up 27 spots to number 16 is Florida commit DJ Lagway. He is one of our biggest risers. Andrew, please explain why. Well, I think he might be the most physically gifted quarterback in the 2024 cycle. Six foot three, 230 pounds. He could play college baseball if he wanted to, and that shows up in his arm. I mean, he lets it rip. 
Look, the past two seasons, right, coming into this senior year, DJ Lagway was just 10 and 10, completing less than 60% of his passes. We wanted to see if he would take a step forward as a passer here as a senior, and he has. He's completed over 70%, 36 touchdowns, just four interceptions. He's ran for over 500 yards, five more scores, and more importantly, he's got the Willis Wildcats, that's with a K, off to a 7-0 and start. NFL executives drooled over Anthony Richardson. They also drooled over Josh Allen, big frame mobile quarterbacks that can let it rip. We are drooling over DJ Lagway. As are the fans down in the swamp, too. They are excited to get this guy as their quarterback. Let's go ahead and break down the top 10 one by one, starting with number 10 out of Alabama, the number one edge in the class, Jordan Ross. He is committed to Tennessee. I know you're excited about this one, Emily. This is a guy that we kind of took a shot on. We saw him in Atlanta kind of the beginning of the year. He blew up that combine, ran a 4.78, super long, 80-plus inch wingspan. He has just gotten better and better, and you want to see ascending players. I think this is a guy we had some question marks about his frame. Not anymore. He has bulked up. He's played well against the run, and in terms of getting to the passer, he kind of reminds us a little bit of Brian Burns, the All-Pro with the Carolina Panthers. So this is a dude right now. I have no idea how he got out of the state of Alabama, but if you're Josh Heupel, you got to be super excited about this dude. And at number nine, we have a new top linebacker, up seven spots out of the state of Texas. He is Jordan Ross, and he is com- or Justin Williams, excuse me, and he is committed to Georgia. Yeah, he's a freak athlete, right? So Sammy Brown, the Clemson commit, was our number one linebacker. We still love him. But Justin Williams leapfrogs him in the rankings. And it really, I just think we came to the consensus that, hey, he might have a higher ceiling. This is a guy that went 4-4 on the lasers in the 40-yard dash back in March at over 200 pounds. He's a former safety, and you want to move your defenders forward and closer to the ball. I think his ability to close gaps and the snap of a finger is so unique in this class. He's going to be excellent at spying the quarterback at the next level. You see the need for that every Saturday when you watch college football. So we're big fans of Justin Williams, another guy with the arrow is pointing up. Coming in at number eight, another new addition to the top 10, up nine spots out of Alabama, wide receiver Cameron Coleman. He is committed to Texas A&M. Another Alabama guy here, and we're talking about freaks. This guy is a super freak, six, three and a half, 180 pounds plus, four, four, eight on the lasers. The name that kind of comes up when you watch him, George Pickens. I think he can do a lot of different things, but I love his ability to play above the rim. I love the ball skills as well. It gives you a little run after catch ability. He is a big physical target. You add him with a guy like Terry Bussey, another five star at Texas A&M, and then Draylon Miller as well. I mean, Jimbo Fisher, Bobby Petrino, I know they need to get that offense pumping, but this is the type of guy that can really change your offense. A lot of wide receivers <laughs> deemed five stars. At number seven, yet another big riser, up 14 spots to make his debut in the top 10 out of the state of Illinois, defensive lineman Justin Scott. He is currently committed to Ohio State. Emily, he's a functional big man, getting reps on both sides of the ball and just moving people out of the way. I think if we listed Justin Scott as an offensive tackle or as an offensive guard, he'd probably be a top 100 prospect for us. But he's going to play defense there in Columbus or wherever he ends up, uh, and he has a chance to make an impact. We dig into the profiles. He played basketball on the AAU circuit, just a guy that can move, he's got some power, and I still think there's some meat left on the bone. So we're big fans of Justin Scott and Larry Scott, uh, Ohio State's defensive line coach is getting a good one. And at number six, one of our biggest risers and only new five star in the top 10, up 31 spots out of the state of Florida, defensive lineman LJ McCray currently on the market. I'm not sure anybody's had a better senior season than LJ McCray, and I got to give a lot of credit to Andrew Rivens. I mean, he kind of sniffed this out. So I'm earlier in the season, live evaluation. This is a guy that we have continued to kind of trend up throughout the evaluation process. You look at him, six foot six plus, six foot nine wingspan. He's got 35 inch arms and 10 and a half inch hands. You might be thinking, why is that important? Big old paws. He plays with power. You see right there his ability to get up the field vertically. He can play against a run, but he gives you some pass rushing upside as well. I love this kid. Whoever gets their hands on him, they are going to be in business. This guy's going to be a day one wreak of havoc on Saturdays. 
Whew. All right, let's go to our top five. In at number five, Missouri native wide receiver Ryan Wingo. He, too, is uncommitted. Yeah, we remain higher on Wingo than the rest of the recruiting industry, and I think we're confident in this evaluation and in this ranking. He has wide receiver one type of traits, tracking football. Our friends over there, they track this thing called the PAI score. He's got a perfect 5.0, uh, but it's not just the track times and the, and the straight line speed. I mean, he, Ryan can go get the football, and then when the football is in his hands, he's either going to run through people or he's going to run away from them. Uh, so we are big fans of Wingo. Interested to see where he ends up. You know, Missouri, Luther Burden, um, that, that, that certainly would intrigue me with him potentially being in that Tigers offense. All right, the number one defensive lineman in the class is in at number four, also from the state of Missouri, Williams Winery. He's locked in with the home state school, Mizzou. Probably not a prettier football prospect than Williams Winery in this class. In, in Missouri, Eli Drinkwitz, they gotta be excited. Seven foot wingspan. In terms of everything that you're looking for, verified information, he checks all those boxes. I think the biggest thing with him throughout seven games this season, he's only got four sacks. He's got to learn how to play through his frame, understand how to utilize his size and his strength. He is an elite level athlete. And the good thing for Missouri, I think it's a match made in heaven. He can get on the field early. I think reps are important for him, but he's a guy that is certainly going to have an early impact in the SEC. All right, moving up a spot into the top three, the number one corner in the 2024 class out of Florida, Ellis Robinson. He is committed to Georgia. I watch a lot of IMG Academy, right? <laughs> and for good reason. I mean, it's a powerhouse, but every time that defense is on the field, my eyes instantly go to number 12, and that's Ellis Robinson. I mean, he is everything you want in a new age cornerback, over six foot, long arms, verified foot speed, not a ton of footballs come his way. They haven't here during his senior season, but he's got a pick and he shuts down one side of the field. I think he's a guy that can be ready to go day one. Our number two player in the class debuted in the top spot. He is the number one quarterback out of Arizona, Dylan Riola. He is also committed to the dogs. I think everybody wanted to know how Dylan Riolo was going to do when he transferred to Buford in Georgia, and I think he's responded. He has kind of played himself into the upper echelon of college football prospects. And listen, what I love about him, he's everything that you want. He's got an elastic arm. He can make every throw on the field. But he's taking care of, of the football this year. 14 touchdowns, no interceptions. He's been super efficient. I think this Buford offense actually lends to where he is going to play at Georgia in Mike Bobo's offense. He throws a deep ball better than any quarterback prospect I have seen in a long time. So Dylan Riola, a lot of confidence in him, what he's done this season. I like to say the arrow's pointing up. Everything we've seen at the Elite 11, senior tape as well. A lot to be excited about in Athens. Friends? We have a new number one. The top wide receiver in the class is now the top player, Jeremiah Smith. The Florida native is committed to Ohio State. Generational talent, right? I mean, it's been fun to just see Jeremiah Smith's rise ever since he emerged on the recruiting scene as a youngster. He has uh, morphed into a well-rounded cheat code on the offensive side of the ball. He's obviously got the size. I think what's scary about Jeremiah Smith is He's still maturing from a physical standpoint. Like he's only going to get bigger and faster and stronger. Still a bully at the catch point, but his ability to pick up yardage after the catch is something we have noticed here as a senior. He's got 52 passes for 781 yards and 11 touchdowns in just seven games. And he is constantly drawing double teams. Our first ever wide receiver there in the number one position, but we feel really good about Jeremiah Smith. You said it. It's our breaking news. There is a new number one. And for the first time in 24-7 sports history, a wide receiver takes the top spot in our top 247 rankings. Jeremiah Smith is the number one player in the 2024 class as of today. Andrew, what makes this pass catcher so worthy of that historic top spot? Well, Emily, I'm going to be honest, right? There's been a ton of debate behind the scenes really for almost a year now about this number one spot. And, and we've talked about different prospects. Dylan Riola, his name's come up. Williams and Winery, his name has come up. But ultimately, I think we as a group, meaning the scouting department at 24-7 Sports, we feel the best 
about Jeremiah Smith settling and eventually one day being selected early on in the NFL draft. Now, the NFL draft uh, serves as the compass for our rankings, and it's been a long time. 1996 was the last time a wide receiver went number one overall. That was Keyshawn Johnson. So this is a bit of an unprecedented move, but I think right now, you know, with a couple months to go, a few more games and, and those all-star events, events, we feel the best about Jeremiah, you know, being a, a, a top draft pick. And then you look at the NFL, it's becoming more and more of a passing league. Over the past three years, we've seen 21 wide receivers go in the first round. Uh, the highest one was Jamar Chase at number five overall. So we'll see how it shakes out. I mean, there's a chance Dylan Riola could retake that number one position. But as it stands today, Jeremiah Smith is our guy. We feel very confident about him. You know, you talk with college contacts, different uh, industry sources. A lot of people agree, you know, if Jeremiah Smith was in college right now, he'd be able to play at the Power Five level and start for some programs. I want to add on to what Andrew's saying there. I mean, I think this is more about Jeremiah Smith, the type of prospect that he is and the conviction that we have in Jeremiah Smith and the live exposure that we've had as well. When you study the player, six foot three, over 200 pounds, this is a guy that can beat you in a multitude of ways. He understands how to use his size, how to use his strength at the point of attack. But the other thing, he's probably the best run after catch threat in the country. This guy is dynamic. He had 17 receptions against Bergen Catholic, a very respectable program earlier this year for over 300 yards. You saw bracketing coverage. You saw double teams. They threw everything at him. They had no answers. Jeremiah Smith is different. That's why we went with him at number one. Speaking of a guy who is just different, DJ Lagway making his debut in the top 32, earning that fifth star. Not a huge surprise considering the way he started his senior season. Andrew broke it down for us. Coop, but he also jumps Elite 11 finals winner and Alabama quarterback commit Julian Sang. So what went into this quarterback evaluation? He's gotten better and better every year. You look at him as a sophomore, 55, 57%. As a junior, 65% or 67%, excuse me. This year, 75% completion rate, 36 touchdowns, four interceptions, over 23. 100 yards passing and then you look at the athlete Andrew mentioned earlier in the show he could go play D1 college baseball if he wanted to he is arguably the best playmaker at the position I love everything DJ Lagway has to offer we had some questions coming out the elite 11 he has answered them this year he was 10 and 10 as a starter before his senior season he is 7 and 0 right now at Willis DJ Lagway I, he can get it done through the air on the ground whatever you want he's going to need a little bit of seasoning once he gets to Gainesville but he's the type of guy in a similar way Anthony Richardson was you're going to see these flashes and if he can put it together I mean this is the type of guy that one day could be the number one top five draft choice in the NFL draft certainly exciting. Hey, Cuba, I always say it he's kind of you know the the lottery ticket with the monster payout and I think we thought all right it's going to take some time now as a senior it seems as if he's a little bit ahead of schedule and speaking to the Julian Sayan versus DJ Lagway debate. I think for us, why we went with DJ Lagway right now at number two is is the ceiling, what he could be. We saw it at the Elite 11 finals. I mean, Julian Sayan was lights out. He has the higher floor, but DJ Lagway, I mean, the, the good is really, really good. I mean, he can do some things that no other quarterback in this cycle can. So we'll see how it shakes out. Julian Sayan also having an excellent season out there in California. Mm -hmm. He is impressed. Uh, creating, running the football as well. Uh, but right now, just just that upside and what he can be is why DJ Lagway was number two for us. Lagway certainly making it tough on you guys, but definitely a good problem to have. We also have a new number one linebacker in the class, Justin Williams, jumping arguably maybe the best athlete in the class in Sammy Brown. Andrew, you have him at number one on your freaks list. So what does that say about what the rankings team thinks of Justin Williams? Well, it's kind of funny. I mean, Georgia wanted Sammy Brown and, you know, they were recruiting Justin Williams. But after Brown picked Clemson, that's when they turned up the heat on Justin Williams. And these guys are, I think, are to be neck and neck, just like with Dylan Riola and Jeremiah Smith and Williams and Winery, you know, who finishes number one after the All-Star Games. I think we're going to have that same conversation for the top linebacker spot between Justin Williams and Sammy Brown. Both these guys are uh, can run. Obviously, they have elite athletic profiles. Um, they get the job done on both sides of the football. Uh, just with Justin Williams, I think right now, we just see a little bit of a higher ceiling than we do 
with Sammy Brown. Maybe there's some more developmental upside. I mean, he's going to Athens. He's going to play for Glenn Schumann, Will Muschamp, Kirby Smart. Like, those guys know what they're doing with linebackers. But that's not the reason why he's here. I said it before, just that ability to close gaps. Not many guys can do it. Uh, I think he's someone that can get on the field early on in his career in certain situations. And his calling card is the ability to mirror quarterbacks, right? And when they take off and run, you know, stop them behind the line of scrimmage. A lot of you are tuned in to watching this show right now, but not a lot of likes. So they're getting in my ear asking for me to ask you to hit that thumbs up button. We've got a new five-star tackle in Jordan Seaton. He now makes two <laughs> five-star offensive tackles. And it's a valuable position. I mean, just to put it into perspective, five were taken in this year's NFL draft, but just not a lot of depth at that position this year. Coop, what is it about Seaton in particular, though, that saw him rise over 50 spots in this latest ranking? He's a guy who's had an excellent senior season. We talked about the importance of senior tape, and this is why Jordan Seaton is kind of the prime example of that. He is now at IMG Academy. He has completely transformed his body. Andrew's got a great story about him eating one peanut butter and jelly a day and then running a mile <laughs> or something like that. But he looks great, and it showed up on the field. This is a guy that we originally had as an interior offensive lineman, now have as a tackle. Quick twitch, explosive. His ability to react and recover, especially at the second level, super strong hands. He kind of looks like what we've seen at IMG before. I think Tyler Booker, who's now at Alabama, is probably the best comp for him, a guy that could play right tackle. We could see move inside at the next level, but this guy has gotten better and better, and I love him physically. I think he's going to be ready to play early at the next level. Yeah, make sure you go check that out on 247sports.com. Eating a sandwich and going for a run. <laughs> Whatever works, and it's clearly working for him. We got one more player who earned a fifth star we want to talk about. Defensive lineman LJ McCray. Andrew, he didn't just become a five star. He is now the number six player in the country, and you've watched him up close and personal. What did you see that warranted this huge rise? He creates pressure on pretty much every snap. And with LJ McCray, I mean, the specs, the measurables have never been a question with him. I go back to a Under Armour camp in March. I tweeted out some video of him just doing drills in shirts and shorts. Next thing you know, I have college coaches from around the country hitting me up in the inbox. Hey, who is this kid? Where is this kid? Uh, give me the contact info for this kid. Uh, and then you get into the, the junior tape, right? It's good. But only three sacks in 15 games. And LJ McCray, his father, as coach at the collegiate level, normally if dad's a head coach, you're pretty polished and, and you're producing. But he was going both ways, playing some tight end, catching passes. I mean, initially when I found out about him when he was a freshman, he was talking about playing offense in college. Something has uh, flipped a switch in his head. Now he views himself as a defender, um, and he just gets after the quarterback. He can blend speed and power. You know, he's 260 pounds. I think he could be 300 pounds uh, and carry that weight very well. He's got the frame to do it. Uh, just a guy we like a lot, lateral burst. He's starting to pick up some pass rushing moves. I think he can add even more to the menu. I'm interested to see where he ends up. I think he fits at any of his five uh, finalists, you know, Florida, Miami, FSU, Auburn, Georgia. You can mold him into whatever you want. Uh, and, and I think his best football is definitely ahead of him. It's not going to be four or five years till we see what LJ McCray can really be. All right. I'm going to shock you both. Uh, the people have questions. They have submitted them in the chat, so we're going to answer a couple of them. Uh, this is for both of you, but Andrew, you can start with this one. How close was Luke Krummenhawk to making a five-star status in this update? Well, I saw that one come across the Slack channel. Um, <laughs> you knew 24 that hours before things went finalized, mm -hmm. I, was, I was texting the scouting department about it. I was like, hey, just want everyone to marinate on this. I mean, he was right there. Mm -hmm. And... And ultimately, I mean, we watched a ton of his games. This is a guy coming out of the Elite 11 finals we really liked. Um, just not there just yet. And we're going to get him at the All-American Bowl in January. We're going to get a chance. Uh, and as a second-year starter, I think it's kind of expected. You know, Luke has some really wow throws, and then there is some head scratchers. So he's right there knocking on the door. And with our new setup, right, 32 five-stars right now, the last thing we want to do is move a guy in and then have to pull that away. So we decided to hold off for now. Uh, I, I think he, I don't have it in front of me, but he's got one of the higher grades for the guys outside of the top 32. And we'll see what happens. I mean, we have long been a fan. Ryan T Tannehill is the comp, you know, former wide receiver playing some quarterback. He has the tools 
just want to see how the senior season goes and then how he stacks up uh, alongside some of the other quarterbacks in a padded setting. I think Luke Cromenhawk, he's still trying to figure it out. When you watch the tape, I, you see the flashes, right? He can make every throw on the field. We loved him at the Elite 11, but it was a little bit of a roller coaster ride. And I think as Andrew kind of pointed out, I think the luxury for us is we get to see him in the postseason at the All-American Bowl. That is good on good, right? Guys like Lincoln Kineholz last year from South Dakota really stepped up in that environment. And I think a guy like Luke Cromenhawk is certainly going to have that opportunity to do the same thing. But if you're looking at guys outside of the top 32 that you're circled like, hey, I wonder if that guy should be in there. I think Luke Cromenhawk would probably be that guy, and I'm not the only one. All right, we got one more question here. Coop, I'm going to let you start this one off. Uh, how are camps versus in-season play weighted for rankings? Which do you view is more important in the evaluation process? Well, I think we talk about the NFL being our compass all the time, right? And I think the film is always the baseline, but a lot of what we do is projecting the athlete. Where are these guys going to be in three to four years, right? What is the environment that they are going to be in? It's hard to project guys like Justin Ross when you got him at 215 pounds, but you know in college on Saturdays, he's probably going to play around 240. We talk about the importance of senior tape all the time, that's the importance of that, right? You want to see how these guys are developing. They are 16, 17, 18 years old. Joseph Jonah Ajanye is a great case. From Nigeria originally, this is a guy that is still learning the game of football. He turned 17 in November, right? So the ceiling on him is not, he hadn't even scratched the surface of what he's going to be yet, but it's a great question. But those things come into balance a little bit. And I would say it's probably a case by case, depending on the player. I'll add here, I mean, I think any evaluation is valuable for us, right? We're, we have the luxury. I mean, most of these schools don't get around these kids as much as we do. We can go see them play games. We can go see them in practice as many times as we want. We got the seven on seven. We got the camps where they test and all that stuff. Uh, I think all that's important. All that is critical to the evaluation process. But the film is king, right? I mean, these senior season evaluations, we've talked about it. You can tell a lot. Now, I'm not just talking about the highlight tape. I'm talking about the full games. What does this guy look like for 60 snaps, right? We aren't, we're not just looking at the five best snaps from the game. We're looking at the entire game. Does he play with a motor that runs hot? Is he playing in all three phases? I, I think the, 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 the game, what they do in the pads is, 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 is king, right? That is that is going to dictate a lot because I think you can get lost in numbers so many times. Let's go back to the 2023 scouting combine, right? DJ Turner ran the fastest time, sub 4-3. We went back and looked when he went to high school. His fastest time, I think, was 4-6-9 on the lasers in the 40-yard dash. I think sometimes the data can be a little deceiving, but it helps supplement this entire evaluation, right? Hey, we think this guy's fast. What does he look like when he's actually playing people? Is he pulling away from them or are people catching him? So the film is important. The testing's important. All of it's important. But I, at the end of the day, we want to see what they're going to do under the lights. Thank you both. Cooper, you're not going anywhere, but thank you for <laughs> your work towards these rankings. Thank you to our entire rankings team. Uh, I told you that this is a fun day for me. I know it's a fun day for people watching, too, just to see the shuffling. But again, this is not the end. This is also not the extent of the rankings. Soon enough, you will find the full list of the top 247 players on our website on 247sports.com. We just revealed the top 32. Our rankings team has been hard at work. Ranking, again, the top 247, that means 247 players. So if you're curious where the other 215 land, you can check that out soon enough at 247sports.com.